Is that off? Yes. Okay, so so that you don't get stuck to your seat, we came out for a bit of fresh air. Um, I just wanted to um, pick on a, a theme which is a, a big theme of the work here at the Allerton Project, but one which has come up constantly with all three groups of farmers actually, the, the, the group of Kellogg's and Nestle and, and Waitrose, is the, the focus on soil and the importance of soil and soil management. Um, it took about two acres to feed a person 50 years ago. Uh, we now would do it with half an acre and the amount of land to feed each one of us is, is going down all the time. And in fact, Andy put a slide up showing how much more food we need to produce. And, and we did great things actually from the, from the 1940s to the 1980s we quadrupled our wheat yields in this country from, from two tonnes a hectare to eight tonnes a hectare. But really since the uh, early 1990s our yields have pretty much flatlined and that's despite the fact that we've got new technology and new inputs and I fundamentally believe that the reason for that is that the the cause of this plateauing is the condition of our soils and I think the farmers are realizing that as well. So in the Kellogg's group we have Philip Wright who comes around and helps the farmers to understand how to best manage their soils to alleviate compaction but I actually think we need to take a longer term look at what we're doing particularly at soil organic matter levels and you'll have seen that one of the big trials that we were involved in was with cover crops which are all part of that thinking as to how we uh, get more organic matter into the soil. So on my workbench this afternoon, I've got five soil samples and every one of these has been taken within a hundred meters of where we're stood here at the moment. Um, the, first, the first one I have here has come from an area of pasture land which as far as I know has never been ploughed. It forms far part of the historic uh, village of Loddington and you can see that it's, uh, it's beautifully crumbly and well draining. I dug this this morning, it was actually, um, you know, the spade went in, no problem at all to get that out. And that, the reason for that is the organic matter in there is probably around 6%, um, so a really well structured soil that, uh, that grows well and in truth this is what we, we, we need to be doing in our rotations, we, we need to go back to the past when our ancestors rotated arable crops with, with grass, there was a good reason for that, not just for pest disease and weed control but for what it did to the soil. So here you have the next sample. Uh, this has actually come out of the field that you're stood in at the moment. There is a bit of history to this field. Uh, this field was in permanent pasture up until 1992 when the trust took over. Uh, we needed to increase the profitability of the farm and reduce the amount of gray, uh, grass that we had in the rotation. And so we, we switched this into arable production. Uh, and there's no doubt that there was a good reason why this field had been put into grass in the first place. You know, it ain't the most productive on the farm. And uh, as the years have gone on, the field has uh, is produced lower and lower yields. You couple that with herbicide resistant black grass, and again, there's a really good reason to uh, to bring it back into grass, which is what we've done. We've just done four years of grass in here. I can't believe how much that structure has improved in just those four years. This, uh, this would not have looked anything like this when we turned it over to grass. So, so the grass puts lots of fine roots down um, into the ground but also you build your earthworm numbers and they aerate the soil. So you can see that uh, we've not we've not ploughed this this field and actually um, it is actually sown. I can just see the, the wheat coming through. So this has been sown with winter wheat now. 
Uh, we didn't plough this field because we know that that is the best way to get rid of your earthworms. And having spent four years allowing them to build up, the last thing you want to do is to get rid of your earthworms. And you know, when you see the plough going across the field and you see the seagulls coming in, they're not eating the soil. It's your worms that are going. And there's no truth in the story that when the plough cuts an earthworm in half, you get two earthworms. In fact, you get one dead one in two halves. So, so we want to keep those. There's also another reason for doing this which is if you've got a black grass problem then the last thing you want to do is to bring up the dormant seed from the soil and bring it up into the germination zone black grass doesn't last very long it really doesn't like being left on the surface any black grass which has been on the surface here for the last four years will have either germinated and then got grazed off the seed will have rotted or the seed would have been predated by beetles or birds but the top will be fairly sterile of black grass seed if you now plough, you bring that black grass up to the top. So reason number two, not, not to do that. Uh, reason number three is that you will lose a lot of this organic matter if you plough as well, because you introduce oxygen into the soil. That means the microbes get going and they break that down, which we don't want to do either. So what we have in fact done is used a low disturbance subsoiler. So those straight lines that you can see have allowed the uh, air to get into the soil but in a very uh, controlled way and broken up any compaction left after the sheep. Now that is definitely a problem with sheep and in the Industrial Revolution when they built the canals they used to line the bottoms of the canal with clay and run sheep over them because it was the best way to seal it and that's exactly what the sheep will do in this field too. <coughs> so going through with that subsoiler just loosens that up and then we go in with a direct drill which as you can see has put the seed into the soil and that is now um, going well so um, so we hope to see a good result now over the next few years um, i would expect um, some nitrogen to release from the grass over two years that will reduce our fertilizer bill um, we've got evidence that where we've worked on this we get more beetles so more natural predation and so on so again many of the things that the companies are looking for to achieve with the farmers in the group of, of, of a more natural approach to working. My, my sample uh, number three comes from a field which has not gone through the grass phase of the rotation yet. Um, this is a purely arable field but we've practiced zero till in this field now for nine years and what we've seen is the earthworm numbers go from about 200 per cubic meter to around 700 per cubic meter and that means that in the soil and I, c I couldn't dig this out as a block today you see how these have come out as a block because the roots are holding it together I couldn't do that with this one because there's so much air space in this sample it just completely fell apart and that's despite the fact we've had quite a lot of rain in the last few days so you can see that this is is beautifully crumbly um, about 50% of the soil volume is actually airspace. That's great news because when the beast from the east came across here and dumped about three foot of snow on us, that was the last, the, the, the melt from that was the last decent rainfall we had until about six weeks, two months ago. That melt went in and filled up that airspace with water space. And as a result, this crop kept growing through the drought of the summer. And in the end, yielded the, the best on the farm this year for a crop of wheat and um, you know if you want to sell this idea to a farmer that's a really good way to do it so we had a really great question earlier this morning about resilience yes resilience that's what we need here this is resilience this is allowing us to deal with heavy rainfall because the airspace takes up the water it allows us then to deal with drought because the water is released to the crop and keeps it going I move on to my penultimate sample. These two are very close to each other, uh, same soil type obviously, but this field has been subject to a plough cultivation re regime mixed with some zero or min till. Um, normally this sample comes out more like this, but because of the dry summer, the clay is cracked 
and this has allowed the moisture to go in. So nature has actually been quite good to our soil this summer. That cracking that we get on clay has broken this up substantially and I couldn't get it out as a single block. In fact, I'm, I'm quite amazed at actually how good that is. My only concern is that, that is the top bit. Okay, so this bit down here is better. It's cracked down there, the water's gone and it's crumbling, but that's the top bit. And if you're a little seed, that's not fun. And you should feel that as well. The bulk density of that is, is enormous. So that's, that's really hard stuff. And uh, that's gonna take a bit of work. Whereas you can see, this is the equivalent look. You still see the stubble there. You see how crumbly that is at the top. So very much easier to drill into. And in fact, you can see an oat seed, which has been direct drilled into that, which is uh, germinating. And then finally, we come to this fella here. If you want to build a house, this is the sort of stuff you want to use. Uh, <coughs> it's, uh, it's really not good at all. Um, and this is a result really of, um, of machinery compaction. So that's something else we've got to be careful of. Our machines have got bigger and bigger and bigger. It, it costs money to put compaction into the soil. Compaction costs you money while it's there and then it takes you money to take it out again afterwards. So avoiding compaction in the soil is uh, really important. Th this has come from, from a gateway where obviously there's a great deal of trafficking and the water puddles and it simply uh, is not conducive for growing a crop at all. But it just, just show the damage that a farmer can do to his soil if he doesn't manage it carefully. So there we have it, uh, five different samples of soil, all within 100 metres, all Hanslow Denchworth series, but each of them showing different characteristics according to the crop rotation. And one of the things that we're trying to persuade government to do in a post-CAP era is to invest in our soils. And it's good to see that in the 25-year environment plan, healthy soils are mentioned as something that the government should invest in. If we can manage to bring grass back into all arable rotations, and by bringing grass back, I do not necessarily mean bring animals back. Uh, we've done it here because we've got a neighbor who can bring the sheep in, but bringing grass back into the system is a huge remedial uh, measure for, uh, for soil. You can cut and mulch it um, and compost it on the surface. And in that case, you can probably go back into the arable rotation even quicker than you can when you're grazing it. But we think that alone um, could be useful in improving the health of the soil. So grass back into the rotation, uh, reducing tillage and reducing the amount of compaction, all those things are going to help.